I'm Candace Bushnell. I'm the author of Sex in the City. Let's talk about the crappy men of Sex in the City. Aiden Shaw, I would never ever date an Aiden. He's the anti Mr. Big. I personally wouldn't date the character of Aiden, but I personally would date uh, the man who played the character. And I did. Aiden was a, the good guy, except that he wanted a conventional life. Isn't he what you've been telling everybody all along that you really wanted? And once you get engaged, you can't get off. Alexander Petrovsky, he's the artist type. I certainly feel like I live the life of an artist. So the big curiosity is maybe that's the type of guy I should be with. And then what does Carrie find out? That type of man can be very, very, very self-centered. He can really be bad for one's own creativity because there's only room for one star in the family and you know it's gonna be him. Trey McDougall, he is a very specific New York City type. He's a type of guy you only pretty much see on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. He is a society type who is very so immersed in manners and how things look on the outside. He checks all of the boxes and that's something Trey is really an example of how the guy who checks all the boxes can be really the wrong answer. Steve Brady, he's the bartender. He's the regular guy. He's the good guy. He's the decent guy. In the Sex and the City days, the Steve Brady kind of looks like a second choice. Believe it or not, 25 years on, Steve Brady could be looking pretty damn good because he is the nice guy he's there for his family and he's the regular guy he's kind of the guy that believe it or not when you get to be middle aged when everybody's shorter and everybody's kind of the same looking and nobody really has any hair steve brady is a prince I loved the actor who played him, David Eigenberg, and I would say to David, David, you must have so many women throwing themselves at you because you're Steve on Sex and the City. And he was like, Candace, I don't have any women throwing themselves at me because I'm Steve on Sex and the City. Jack Berger. Ugh. He's your contemporary. He does the same thing that you do. He's in the same business. He's always going to subtly be in competition. His work crisis is gonna be so much bigger than your work crisis. And then in the end, he's not even that freaking hot. Okay, Smith Jared, now pretty much every guy on the planet, or certainly on a reality show, looks like Smith Jared. He's really the one character on the show who ends up being successful with the help of Samantha. She's going to have a certain amount of power in the relationship because she's older and because he looks up to her. So she automatically has the upper hand. I feel like I've had those kinds of relationships. I mean, I was married to a man who was 10 years younger. You know, you're going to have more power in the relationship because you are older. And then we were really happy together for a while and then we weren't. I met Mr. Big at a fashion event. I thought he was the coolest guy. He knew everybody, all the designers. He was never like in a sweat and he wasn't in a rush. And as somebody said, he always looked like he'd just been dry cleaned. The tricky thing about Mr. Big is that you have to ask yourself, is it the reason you're so crazy about him? Because he represents what you want to be yourself, but don't quite have the guts. And for me, yes, a, a part of that was true. I did want to be Mr. Big. 
The question is, is Mr. Big afraid of commitment? <sighs> That's real life Mr. Biggs. I mean, he's the guy who, he's tried being married, but didn't work for a variety of reasons. Carrie wasn't Mr. Big's regular type. She was smarter and funnier than the kind of girls he would usually go out with. And he doesn't really know what to do with that. And that's kind of one of the essential issues with Mr. Big. Relationships are so tricky. It's important to stay whole. Figuring that out, it's probably gonna take a lifetime, but it's worth it.